Hi there, it's Mark Pfeiffer here, and in my last video I talked about the cap rate and how to calculate that and also calculate your net operating income. So I'm going to base uh, this lesson on the last exercise, the last video. This is uh, what we had set up last time to calculate what our cap rate was and then what our total net operating income was. Uh, now what I'd like to do in this video is talk about how to do a break-even analysis how to do a uh, calculation of your expense ratio, how to do a sensitivity analysis, and then how to calculate your before tax cash flow and your after tax cash flow, and kind of explain what all these mean. So the first thing that I wanted to explain was called the break even analysis. So right here I'm gonna put in break even uh, vacancy. So in a break even analysis, what we're asking is, uh, for this case with vacancy, it's what level of vacancy would make this property break even? Uh, in other words, would make it just not earn any cash flow at all. Uh, and actually, before I get into that, I'll explain what before tax cash flow is. So in this scenario, this case, there is no leverage being used on the property. Leverage is, means the same thing as debt or borrowing or real estate mortgage. So we're not using any borrowing here. If we were using borrowing, then with the net operating income, we would have to subtra subtract our debt service or what our mortgage payments were. So in this case, it's zero. So then our before tax cash flow is going to be the same as our net operating income. We would be taking the net operating income, subtracting out our debt service, and that would get us to a before tax cash flow. Since we don't have debt on this property, the before tax cash flow is the same as the net operating income. Okay, so in break even, we're looking at that before tax cash flow. Or you could look at your after tax cash flow. But in this case, we're going to look at what level of vacancy will make our before tax cash flow zero. All right. So the way to do that is what's called a goal seek. Now, if you're using Excel, what you would do is you would go to data up here. You go to a what if analysis, and then you click on goal seek. So set cell, the cell that we are trying to set is this one. And we want to set that to the value zero. And we'll do that by changing our vacancy rate which was, uh, oh, hold on one second. See, and the 10% number is in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put underneath here, vacancy rate. We're gonna make that 10% here. And then over in here, instead of putting 10% in the cell, we're going to click on vacancy rate over here. And that will allow us to do the sensitive, the, uh, goal seek calculation to determine what our break even is. So we'll go back to what if analysis, goal seek. We want to set this cell, actually, our before tax cash flow cell to zero by changing this cell, the vacancy rate. Now when I run this, what it's going to do is it's going to calculate what level of vacancy, what percentage of vacancy will make my before tax cash flow zero. So here we go, 76%. All right, 76%. Remember that number, we'll just do Control Z here to go back. So we're back where everything was again, we'll put 76% here. Now if you ever update something on here, this is going to change. You'll have to redo your goal seek to get that. Uh, but this is good, like a break-even vacancy means, this means that basically the property would have to have 76% vacancy in order for us to have 0% cash flow. Uh, that's really good because, um, well, you have to ask yourself if uh, that, what is the likelihood of this happening where the break-even vacancy would end up being 76%. If the market vacancies are 10%, it seems very highly unlikely. So that's a good thing to look at in terms of uh, a margin of safety. Now, the next thing I wanted to get into was the expense ratio. That is simply looking at your total operating expenses and asking what percentage they make up of your effective gross income. 
In this case, it is 41.3%. Uh, I went online, did some searching, and uh, found that expense ratios normally should be 45%. There's a guy out there called John T. Reed. He has a good website here. And uh, right here, I'll bring up what he says. He says that operating expense ratios uh, for a residential property uh, is 45% plus or minus about 2%. Right now, uh, that also, from my experience, will vary depending on whether the tenant pays for expenses like gas, electric, water, or the landlord pays for those expenses. If the tenant's paying for those expenses, then your total, um, your expense ratio here would be less, would likely be less. The next thing that I wanted to get into was your, what your before tax cash flow was. We went over that. Uh, and then what your after tax cash flow would be. In order to calculate what your after tax cash flow is, you need to determine what your taxable income is. When you're looking, when you do their taxable income calculation, you get your, take your NOI, your net operating income. You will subtract out the interest that you paid on, uh, interest from your, that you paid on your mortgage. In this case, we don't have a mortgage, so it's zero. And then depreciation expense. What is depreciation expense? Depreciation expense is a, um, the, the idea is that over time, as a property ages, it uh, depreciates, it loses some of its value. Now, in reality, in some cases, the property appreciates in markets, but for tax purposes, they allow you to depreciate a property, and uh, for residential property, the depreciation term is 27 and a half years. So they'll allow you to take the building value and depreciate that over a period of 27 and a half years. So you need to know what the building value is. And in this case, we had a purchase price of $950,000. We will assume the building value was 60% uh, of that. Okay, so then the building value will just be the purchase price times the building value. Now, to get an act more accurate idea of what the building value is, you could go onto the assessor's website and check out what they have it listed there. And um, uh, that's something that I've done that's helpful. And then you get an idea of what the percentage is of building value and land value. Land, you cannot depreciate, only the building. So with a 60% building value, that gives us a building value of uh, 570,000. So our depreciation expense would be taking this 570,000 and dividing that by 27 and a half years. So that is how much we get to depreciate in this year. Depreciation is a non-cash expenditure, which means that we're not paying this $20,727 to anyone. Uh, we're just using that in terms of calculating what our taxable income is. And in this case, it's going to be the NOI minus interest payments minus depreciation. should also say that with interest, your debt service is the combination of interest and principal. Principal just means you're paying down the, the loan. Interest is what you're paying uh, you're not paying down the loan, you're just paying uh, a fee to have use of that money. That's what interest is. So this is our taxable income. You'll need to know what your income tax rate is. And you can check that out by searching online. There's different brackets for the U.S. and uh, those are always changing. So it's good to keep up to date with that. We're going to assume a 35% income tax bracket. So then uh, taxes are going to be this taxable income times 35% and that's how much in taxes you have to pay. So then to get to our after tax cash flow we're going to have to subtract our taxes which as we calculated down here were 26,561 and then we get to our after tax 
cash flow. And after tax cash flow is the money that you can spend on uh, whatever. It's, it's the money that goes into your pocket after you've paid all of the expenses on the property, you've paid your lender's uh, interest and principal on their, on their loan to you, and you've paid the government uh, their share of the uh, income taxes. So in this scenario, it's seventy thousand and uh, fifty-five. Seventy thousand and uh, fifty-five dollars. Uh, one other thing that you can do when you're looking at this is calculate a cash on cash return. I made a video on this that you can check out, but in this case, cash on cash return is going to be your before tax cash flow divided by your purchase price. And in this case, because you didn't use any debt, you just take the full uh, purchase price here. But if you're using debt, you wouldn't divide it by your, your purchase price, you would divide it by the total amount of money you had invested in this project, which would likely be a combination of your down payment and your closing costs. So in this case, the cash on cash return is 10.2%, which is the same as the cap rate. The reason why is because you're not using leverage on this property. If you were to use leverage on this property, the cap rate wouldn't change, but your cash on cash return would change. And uh, it would increase if the cost of borrowing that interest rate on your debt was lower than 10, then your cap rate, which is uh, rounded to 10.2% here. So I hope that's been helpful here. I'm going to uh, go through the next exercise and uh, then there will be an answer key down below that you can check your answers on. Just one last point on this exercise is with the break even analysis, you may also wanna do it for your after tax cash flow, since that's the money that's actually gonna go into your pocket. So what you could do is again, you would go to data you would go to what if analysis, then goal seek. You would now click on, instead of before tax cash flow, click on your after tax cash flow number. And you want to set this to zero. And you're going to do that by changing the vacancy rate over here. By doing that, you get an 84% um, vacancy rate for your after tax cash flow. So in break even over here, this one was for before tax cash flow. We could also do one for our after tax cash flow, which was about 84%, which means that the building will have to be 84% vacant. That means 16% occupied for you to have zero cash flow going into your pocket. Now here is the problem set that I'd like you to go through. Using this information here, units, market rent per unit, other income, other income uh, not affected by vacancy, the vacancy rate, operating expenses, purchase price, market cap rate, building value, depreciable life, and income tax bracket, I want you to answer the following questions. What is the break-even vacancy using your before-tax cash flow? What is the break-even vacancy using your after-tax cash flow? What's the expense ratio? What is the before-tax cash flow? What is the taxable income? How is the total income tax, or what is the total income tax expense? What is the tax, the after-tax cash flow? What is the cash on cash return? And what is the cap rate? So go ahead, follow the same format. You have everything you need in here to answer those questions and I will post the answer key as an Excel shared Google document in the description of this video. All right, have fun guys.